What's going on everyone, Spencer here, and welcome to the first episode of my Journey Towards Mechanics Mastery series. This will hopefully be a weekly series where I share my mechanics progress to mastery. It will include everything from my practice plans, the cues I'm working on, my thoughts and feelings while performing the movements, and more. In this episode, we'll be covering my punch turns, hence the video in the background. The footage that you will see is from December 27th, Due to lockdowns and weather, I had a little pause, but I'm back on ice now, so in the next episode, you'll be seeing more current footage. So without further ado, let's get right into it with my practice plan. So here's my practice plan. I won't go through it in detail. You can pause to read if you want. As you can see, I started with the corkscrew and finished off with the reverse 10 and 2, but I'll be releasing those breakdowns in part 2 early next week, so stay tuned for that. Let's get right into my punch turn. I worked on my punch turn in a punch turn to corkscrew infinity flow, which pretty much means you do a corkscrew and punch turn in an infinity or a figure eight pattern. So if you remember from the practice plan, I was in an expiration phase here. So I wasn't focusing on anything in particular. I was just feeling out the movement. That being said, there was a little caveat to that, and that is that I was trying to keep my feet narrow. Specifically on my forehand side turn, I have a tendency after I punch to widen my feet. So if we take a look at, let's look at this rep here. So I punch quite narrow. And then my, if you look at my front foot outside edge, it shoots forward. I'll slow it down even more. So I punch, foot shoots forward like that. And then I get wide in the feet. So let's see that again. Punch, shoot forward, now wide in the feet. What you may also notice is that as the front foot goes forward, my knee is also pulling back, and that's very common to see. So we'll try to see it in this clip. Punch, foot goes forward, and then knee goes back behind the toe. It's kind of hard to see in this clip, so I'll show an old clip of mine where you can really see this effect much better of the front foot going forward and the knee going back. So let's look at this clip here. This is an old clip of mine. I'll put the exact date on the bottom because I'm not sure right now. What you'll see is this effect of my foot shooting forward and the knee coming back and it get really wide. So this is a different pattern, so it's not exactly the same. Of course, this is more um, tight and also there's no corkscrew in the middle. But if you look at one rep here, let's look at the forehand side turn, punch narrow again, and this front foot shoots forward and get really wide. So this is much wider than it was in the clip that I just showed. And again, the knee pulled back so now it's not over the toe anymore, and the foot shoot forward. Let's see that again. Punch narrow, knee is over the toe there. Foot shoots forward, get wide, knee pulls back. Although staying narrow is something that I'm trying to work in on my punch turn, it's not bad per se. It's actually quite common. You even see it at the NHL level. Even an elite NHLer is turned exactly like I just showed. But in my opinion, it's not mastery. It's not what McDavid or Barzell do. And those are the two who I consider punch turn masters. Let's take a look at an NHL's punch turn. One that punches very similar to what I just mentioned. That is the front foot goes forward as the knee pulls back. And that is Quinn Hughes. So let's play it out here. So notice right as he punches and he collapses ankle to the heel, the front foot is going to go slightly forward. So right there, he punches, collapses the ankle to the heel, and right there, the foot goes slightly forward. And the knee seemingly pulls back behind the toe, and that leaves him very wide right before the cross under. So we'll see that again. Punches, ankle collapse, foot goes slightly forward, knee seemingly pulls back behind the toe, and then he's very wide right before the cross under. I want to make something really clear. There's nothing wrong with Quinn Hughes's punch turn mechanics, and some would very might well say that he is a punch turn master, and I wouldn't call them crazy, I might even agree with them. So the overall takeaway from this portion of the video is there isn't one right or wrong way to perform any mechanic. There's more optimal ways, and there's more mechanically advantageous ways, but not necessarily right or wrong. At Train 2.0 and the downhill skating system, we look for those mechanical advantages in our movement. And I personally believe that McDavid's puncher mechanics provide him with a mechanical advantage over, say, Quinn Hughes's puncher mechanics. That is, if two people equal in every regard did some sort of race or drill that only required the use of the punch turn, 
and one person had McDavid's puncher mechanics and the other had Hughes's, the one with McDavid's puncher mechanics would win. Of course, this is a simplification and there is more to mechanical advantage than just speed. Nevertheless, it's a good analogy to understand the basic principle. I'm also planning on making a more detailed breakdown on McDavid's puncher mechanics in the next month, so stay tuned for that one. So why is this something that I'm working on if, say, even guys like Quinn Hughes do things very similar? Of course, way better, but still similar. And that's for two reasons, and really the only two reasons to work or change any mechanic, and that is due to performance and comfort. I'm not as comfortable punching to my foreign side, and my performance is worse compared to my backhand side. That being said, my personal goal, of course, is to take both sides to mastery. So back to my video here. As you can see, I'm able to keep my feet much more narrow on my backhand side. Slow that down. And just a much more comfortable turn overall. Obviously, my shin angle, that is knee over the toe, is kind of brutal there. But that will be worked on in the next coming weeks. And also, hopefully, working on my shin angle and my corkscrew will also help my shin angle in the punch turn. The last thing that I want to say on this asymmetry between my back and a foreign side turn is that it's not something that's new and it's going to be a common theme throughout the series and it's actually present in all my outside edge movements. Naturally, I didn't have access to my knob side outside edge. So knob side would be knob side would be my right foot, knob right foot, blade side would be my left foot. So naturally, I didn't have access to my knob side outside edge. And I'll pull up some old clips here before I did any training on my skating and you'll notice no use of the knob side or right foot outside edge. So there's some old game clips from maybe circa 2018. This is me number five. And as you can see, I was always comfortable turning on my backhand side. See the nice turn there, cross under. But my forehand side was not the case. And you can see here, looking at this knob side outside edge, absolutely none. Boot is just completely, right? completely upright, not on that edge at all, and I just pushed around with my inside edge, never doing a cross under with that knob side outside edge foot. And again, here you can see a comfortable turn on my backhand with the cross under. Here we can see a better clip of my natural forehand side turn. And again, there's just no outside edge being used, barely on the edge, just pushing around with my inside edge. Right here, just pushing around with this foot, no cross under, nothing. Over the years, I subconsciously avoided using my knob side outside edge. And it's kind of crazy, I didn't even realize I could barely turn to my forehand side until I was made aware of it, and then obviously I realized I had a massive imbalance. So really, it was only in the last two and a half years that I gained access to my knob side outside edge. But for 15 plus years, I've been using or at least was pretty comfortable with my blade side outside edge to some degree. It wasn't great, but I was still using it. So of course there's gonna be a big difference there. Drop a comment if you also deal with an imbalance like me and what side you feel more comfortable with. Let's end this punch turn section off with some McDavid clips. And all these clips and more can be found in my McDavid punch turn compilation. If you haven't checked that out yet, I'll put a link to the video somewhere on the screen. So I highlighted these clips because I think they do a good job of showing how he's able to stay narrow or at least keep the same width going through the turn as he had on the punch and how he's able to maintain his knee over his toe the whole time or shin ankle. Let's look at the first example here and look how narrow he punches. Look how close those two feet are together and they stay narrow the entire time. Actually the front foot was forward a bit but he's still very narrow throughout the entire turn and his knee is over his toe for the entire turn. Let's look at the second example here. And we're, again, we're gonna notice how he maintains the same width throughout the entire turn, and it's very narrow. So watch the punch, quite narrow, his feet are very close together. They stay the exact same distance apart throughout the whole turn. And if we pause here, we're gonna see his knee is over his toe for the majority, actually the entirety of the turn. Again, knee over the toe and he exits out. The last example here is an interesting one because he actually is going to punch wide and then narrow his feet versus me who I was punching narrow and then widening my feet. So let's take a look at that here. Punches wide and they get really close together and his knee is well over his toe for the entire turn and he exits out. So how am I going to get my punch turns more McDavid-like? First thing is through gaining awareness. 
Right now, I have a gap in my awareness. That is, I can't fully tell during the movement if my front foot is shooting forward. There's a lot of reps that I feel like I kept my feet narrow, but looking on the video, I obviously did it. So that's the first step. I need to be able to feel and be aware of what my feet are doing during the turn. Secondly, through the coaching cues I get from my coach, Coach Frank at Turn 2.0. So stay tuned to see how I'm able to improve my punch turns. And maybe if you struggle with similar problems, it may be able to help you as well. If you stay this long, I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to continue along with me on this journey or for more NHL mechanics content. I'll see you again in the next one.